Please be seated. So some of you may know the story of the three hermits by Tolstoy. If you do, just bear with me and you for a moment. The short version goes like this. Back in 19th century Russia, there are these three hermits who have made their way up to an island in the Arctic. And these are three very simple men who know how to live off the land and have decided that they want to go up there for the purpose of the salvation of their souls. And they live a completely monastic life. It's a tough life, of course, because it's an Arctic island, but they work the land for the short summer and otherwise live off the stores. And in the meanwhile, they say absolutely nothing to one another in the outside world except for a repetitive prayer that they say all day, every day. And it goes like this. We are three. You are three. Have mercy upon us. That's it. <coughs> well, a bishop of the church on the mainland gets news that these three hermits are up there on the island and thinks to himself, my goodness, they, they don't know the first thing about the faith. And if they're up there for the salvation of their souls, I must surely go up there and teach them. So he hires a boat, and it takes him to this island, and he meets with these three hermits, and after discussing what they're there for, they agree to listen to him. And so he begins to go through basically the whole catechism, the, the lessons of the faith. He teaches them of the incarnation and of the life and the ministry and the parables of Jesus, and then of the passion and the atonement and the resurrection and the ascension and the gifts and the charisms of the Holy Spirit. The whole nine yards, the same thing that we rehearse every year as we go through our liturgical calendar. And they listen with rapt attention, and because it's the way that they learn, they repeat these lessons to themselves over and over again. And finally, the bishop is satisfied that he has done his job, and so he again charters his boat and makes his way back to the mainland. Well, as he's about to pull into the mainland harbor, he sees something very strange behind him on the water. And at first, he thinks that these three men have taken their own boat and come back. But as the scene gets closer, he realizes there's no boat. It's just the three hermits walking on the water toward him as if it were dry land, or actually running, I believe, as the story goes. And as they catch up to him, they say, Father Bishop, we, we try to remember everything you taught us, and you know, while you were with us, we were able to repeat and retain these lessons, but as soon as you left, they began to escape our minds. Would you please <coughs> teach us everything we can? And he looks at them and says, my brothers, you have no need of anything that I just taught you. The prayer you started with was perfectly good. Please go back and carry on. The salvation of your souls is in perfectly good order. We are three. You are three. Have mercy upon us. So we've been having a sermon series this October titled, What is Faith? And for this final one, going to explore that faith is keeping it simple. Faith is keeping it simple. We are three. You are three. Have mercy upon us. It is so easy to get caught up in the complex. It is so easy to think that faith is all about knowing the answers, the incredibly complex complex, multifaceted, sometimes maddeningly elusive answers, and keeping it all contained within our minds and our hearts, and if we just get it right enough, then we'll really encounter God. But wasn't that the problem in today's gospel? The Pharisee was doing exactly that. Now, there's nothing wrong with what the Pharisee was up to. There's nothing wrong with not being a rogue with not being a thief, with not being an adulterer, with not being a tax collector. There's nothing wrong with fasting. There's especially nothing wrong with giving a 
more educated, the more biblically literate, and the more faithful brethren that we have in certain other types of churches. Truth be told, most Episcopalians, even those of us who have gone to seminary, can't quote much of the Bible by chapter and verse. After a while, we start to, to get a little bit more fluent with it. But if somebody asks me what Daniel 5.17 says, I am not going to be able to quote it to you right now. And I think that's true of most people in the pews. But when we get into conversation or perhaps debates with other Christians who do have that kind of fluency, it's all too tempting to think of ourselves as the lesser, the inferior, the ones who are perhaps more susceptible to being wrong because we just don't seem to know it quite as well. But I admonish you to remember that today's parable made it abundantly clear. Faith and prayer is about keeping it simple. Simple is not the same thing as fallible or uneducated or less than. Simple is just a matter of saying, you know what? I'm a finite creature who lives and breathes and moves within a beautiful creation made by an infinite creator. And I understand my role. I understand that I may have tremendous gifts and capacity to think about and work upon multiple things, some of which are absolutely huge. And by all means, Use those gifts. You don't have to completely abandon the Pharisees' way of thinking. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters, and the only thing that can give you boldness and justification, is that utter simplicity. So if the sum total of your faith is, God be merciful to me, a sinner. If the sum total of your faith is, Jesus is Lord, that's all I know, that's all 